Hello, Aluxers. Has it already been a week? Can you believe it? Today we're diving into a special title we've been holding on to for a while. There are many differences between rich and poor in the way each class is brought up, the environments they grew up in and how it affected their perception of reality. In this one, we'll be narrowing down on a couple of things you might remember from your childhood as completely normal, but maybe only now we'll realize that's not what everyone else is doing. Welcome to Alux.com the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Growing up poor comes with a world of its own and most of the things that are completely acceptable in a low-income community are beyond strange for the rich. Here are 15 things that are strange for rich people but normal for poor people. Number 1. Filling just half the tank This is a straight-up difference between two categories. For the rich, this is mind-boggling. Why would anyone drive 10 to 15 minutes to the gas station and only put five or $10 worth of gas in it? For the rich, going to the gas station is something you do as little as possible because nobody has time to keep coming back for a little drip of more fuel every few days. Yet almost everyone growing up poor knows that when money is short, you need to prioritize. Filling up the tank might mean you can't afford food that day and you're not going to need a full tank to get through the week, so you might have to be smart with the little money you have. Something we need to mention is, gas is incredibly cheap in the US compared to Europe. You know, because of the war spoils. Our US audience or even people in Asia might not even realize that people in Europe are still paying at least twice as much for gas. Number 2. Having your credit card declined when you read the title, you were probably expecting to see this one, didn't you? We had to include it. Apart from maybe shitting yourself in public, having your credit card declined while in a long line at the grocery store is probably one of the most embarrassing things that could happen to you. The decline usually is followed by a weird theatrical approach of digging through your purse or wallet in the hopes to miraculously find some long-lost $20 bill and some spare change, but it never shows up. Almost as bad as this is having to let the cashier know you only have a small amount of money with you for your food so they can cut you off in time, with you ending up playing Game of Thrones with the items thinking which one you're going to have to sacrifice next. These are things rich people never consider. You simply pick up anything you want, swipe the card, and it's all green. Here's the big difference between rich and poor people. Poor people use credit cards, which means they borrow money from the bank to pay for stuff, money which they have to pay back in the near future. While rich people use debit cards, which means the account is already filled with their own money. If you buy things on credit, you need to pay interest. That's why being poor is more expensive than being rich. Number 3. Not fixing a bad tooth for us, this is a fundamental example of something that goes even deeper than teeth. It's the idea of ignoring a faulty issue, hoping it'll go away. It's something you can witness in every poor community. If you're sick, you get quarantined in your room until your body figures it out. Maybe drink some homemade tea or, I don't know, have some potato slices around your neck or feet. If you know about the potato slices, you grew up poor, didn't you? Of course you did. Y'all think rich people gargle salt water to cure a sore throat? No, they buy cough syrup like you should. But all these fixes come with a long-term price. You see, while you're here saving money on a cavity that you ignore, the damage is growing and soon you'll need a root canal or worse, pay for an implant. Once again, being poor ends up being more expensive than simply taking care of the problem when it arises. Number 4. Having sleep for dinner we know some of you are laughing at this because you know exactly what we're talking about. Every rich person is tilting their heads like a golden retriever seeing a squirrel on TV because how can anyone have sleep for dinner? Now, we're not saying this happens all the time in poor communities, but sometimes there simply isn't enough money for food. So what do people do? You pretend like you're not hungry. The quicker you go to sleep, the faster tomorrow comes. Just take a moment to think about how deep this concept goes and what the ramifications of this type of thinking are. Number 5. Doing it yourself rather than hiring someone to do it for you. How hard can it be anyway? When you're poor, you don't have money, but you do have time, so you're willing to trade what you do have for even a temporary solution. 
Why pay a professional to come and fix the roof when you can spend the whole week with your kids trying to figure out how to stop the rain from leaking in? This results in makeshift contraptions that are definitely not going to last, but at least solve the problem for a little while. Sometimes, doing it yourself is a smart way to save some money, especially if you're good with your hands and have the time to watch all the YouTube tutorials showing you how to do it. But be careful, because sometimes specialized advice is worth the money. For example, a tax advisor can save you thousands of dollars per year while costing you just a couple of hundred. This is one of those arbitrages poor people are not aware of and they end up paying more just because they were trying to save a little money and do it themselves. Here's a gold nugget for you Aluxers out there who are still trying to do everything yourself today. If you want to be rich in life, you need to stop wasting time doing $10 to $20 per hour work. Whenever possible, figure out a way to outsource this to someone willing to do it. If you're able to move up in the financial hierarchy, you need to focus on doing more valuable work. Why spend a whole day painting a fence when you could hire someone to do it for you and spend your time earning twice or ten times what you're paying the lad? If you want to be rich, stop doing cheap work. A while back we made a super valuable video called 15 Rules of Money, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner. It's one of the most valuable videos we have ever done on our channel and we strongly urge you to watch. Number 6 being charged for not having enough money in your bank account. This is harsh and it's a poor people problem. Three things happen when you don't have enough money in your bank account. One, overdraft fees. It literally costs you more money to be broke. Two, your reputation is damaged. Banks are not gonna be friendly with you in the future. And three, legal and credit problems. Good luck ever getting a loan since your credit score is dropping like crazy. Generally speaking, poor people have a way of pushing credit to the limit. Very often you hear about people maxing out their credit cards with little to no plan of how they're going to manage to pay it back. Credit cards are a modern enslaving tool where people enslave themselves. You mean I can buy the latest iPhone despite working a minimum wage job? Hell yeah, let me flex on these losers. They made it super easy. They even sent the card to your home. All you have to do is swipe. Number 7 siblings sharing a room. For most of you, this might sound completely normal, but it's not really the case for the rich. They simply have enough space for each of the children to get their own room with their own color palette. But it's not rare in the case of poor people or low-income families where everyone is living in a small, crowded area. Many poor families still have their grandparents living with them, resulting in interesting living arrangements. Another thing that's specific to the poor community is simply sitting on the front porch doing nothing. To this day, if you go to poorer areas, you'll still see groups of people sitting on the front porch enjoying the weather and not doing a whole lot. It's actually one of the favorite pastimes. Number 8. Counting money before going anywhere Keeping up with the money situation, when you're poor, you tend to know exactly how much money you have at your disposal before going anywhere. Going to the supermarket and intend on paying cash? You better figure out how to get the most out of those $23.50. In the rare cases where you go to a restaurant, you carefully go through the menu, ending up buying hot dogs and water. It's normal to know all the promotions and the items on the dollar menu at the fast food restaurants because these are your go-to alternatives. The rich are disconnected from this because they don't have to worry about the little things. You're upper middle class when you can go to a restaurant and order based on preference, not on price tag. Number 8. Off-brand food and getting creative if you're familiar with the following, Target's Market Pantry, Walmart's Great Value, Lidl's Crown Field or Freeway and so on, you know what it's like. It's something people do out of necessity and the price difference justifies it when you have so many mouths to feed. Food-wise, there are plenty of other differences. Eating canned food is considered completely normal in the lower and middle class, while the rich rarely touch it. For some families, expiration dates are just recommendations, and probably not only once you've had food that's expired and survived it. Indian and Mexican members of our audience will know this all too well. And lastly, you simply add water to make more of whatever you need. This goes from drinks to shampoo. There are even cultural drinks that have developed from this. 
In Eastern Europe, there's something called spritz, when you have only one bottle of wine, but there's too many of you. So you mix it with some sparkling water, resulting in a lighter drink. But for most rich people, adding water to wine is sacrilege. Number 10. Having more children than you can afford. Unfortunately, this is a harsh truth. Poor people have, on average, more kids than the rich for the following reasons. 1. Financial aid. Some families have kids in order to benefit from the financial aid the government gives out for each child. 2. Not using condoms or other contraceptives. Why spend a couple of bucks on condoms when your four children already confirm your pull-out game is weak, right? And 3. Help around the household, or in some countries, around the farm. Historically, people needed manpower to work the fields. Now, poor people have more kids in the hopes that one of them will make it and help everyone else out of poverty. While rich people would rather have, on average, only one or two children and focus all of their resources and efforts into raising them properly, while at the other end of the spectrum, the children basically raise themselves. We did a deep dive into this and broke everything down for you to understand it in a video called 15 Mistakes People Make When They're Young, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner or heading to the description. Number 11. Having someone you know pull your car when it breaks down. There's this thing called the network of contacts poor people use whenever they need something done. A simple example is having your car break down. The average person would call a towing or an insurance company, a vehicle shows up in 30 minutes, the car gets taken to a service station, and the problem is solved. Poor people get creative with it. They call a friend that knows a friend whose uncle has a towing company. The uncle might not be available right now, so they call a different family member to help them out. Three hours later, the brother-in-law shows up, and they literally pull the car with tow straps. In some cases, you'll even see a bunch of people manually pushing a car down the road to save a couple of bucks. But hey, life's complicated. Number 12. Improvising a fix, even if it's not so safe. Spend enough time with the locals in a developing area and you'll start to notice some interesting fixes around the house. Starting with random wires coming out of the walls with creative ways to connect an outlet to makeshift heating systems that surprisingly haven't killed anyone so far. Growing up in a poor family, you'll get to learn a different type of skill set. You know that randomly hitting things sometimes gets the job done. If it doesn't immediately work, Hit it harder, or try to take some parts out and put them back exactly as they were. Don't know why, but sometimes it works. The problem with these solutions is they don't last long and expose you to a higher level of danger. When you're poor, you take more risk on in order to save a couple of bucks. But thousands of people die every year during winter because of alternative heating mechanisms. Think about it. You're willing to risk your entire house going up in flames just so you can save $50 to $100 in heating costs. I don't know. Number 13. Walking for long distances. It's completely normal to walk for 30 minutes or more to a destination. In some geographies, people are accustomed to walking even longer than that just to get menial tasks done like getting food, water, getting to work, or going to school. Remember the stories your parents told you about how they had to walk for three moons in waist-high snow uphill both ways just to go to school? For the rich, this is seen as completely ludicrous. This is one of the advantages you have to being brought up in a normal or developed society. There's infrastructure in place for you to get things done quicker. There are roads, buses, bike lanes. For example, Luxembourg made all public transportation free for its citizens. While some people cannot afford to take the bus, the government in some states is working so well the population is reaping the benefits. Number 14. Having dogs sleep outside even during winter. There's a big distinction when it comes to the relationship with animals between the social classes. For the super rich, animals are almost a sort of accessory. They spend thousands of dollars on purebreds so they can show them off. Take any one of those ladies carrying around a chihuahua in their purse. At the other end of the spectrum, for poor people, dogs have a utilitarian aspect. They protect the grounds or the family. They herd sheep. They're meant to earn their keep through actual work. Our position falls somewhere in the middle of these two. 
For most people, pets are seen as a member of the family, thus enjoying a similar lifestyle with the owners. Depending on your lifestyle, the dog or cat might be more or less pampered, but you still have a deeper, personal relationship. Personally, we're big dog people here at Alux, with almost everyone on our team owning a dog, and it breaks our hearts to see people not caring for these amazing beings as much as they should. Number 15. Not calling the police or reporting a crime when it happens. You want to know what's keeping some communities poor? The idea of not being a snitch. You've all heard it, you know it, but the ramifications of this concept drip down through society. The moment you allow any sort of crime to go unpunished, you're feeding the unjust system and harming your society as a whole. This is one of those domino effects that starts with small things and chain people to misery their entire lives. The culture of not cooperating with authorities in order to solve a crime and make your area a safer place is keeping everyone down. Poor people have a sort of separate code of justice that's not working for them in the long run. Yes, some people take it to extremes, like Barbecue Becky or that one lady calling the police on an eight-year-old selling water. But the issue is deeper than that. This whole I ain't no snitch mentality comes from the notion that everyone has skeletons in their closet and teaches new generations to value community over the things that actually could make their lives better. Corruption breeds corruption. Crime breeds more crime, and in an effort to protect one or two people, you're sinking the entire ship. If you really think about it, it's tragic how people are digging themselves deeper just because that's what others have convinced them to do. While this is normal for poor people, the rich are perceived as uptight and arrogant when they demand on a standard of quality and effectiveness, but that's what made them rich knowing their rights and using the tools at their disposal to improve their reality. We could keep going on about this for days, but maybe it's time we let you guys take the story from here on. What else would you add to this list? What are things that are strange for rich people but normal for poor people in your experience? Add your insights to the comments. We can't wait to hear what your experiences have been. And of course, as a thank you for watching this until the end, you get a bonus piece. Voting your interests. Yep, the bonus point is to some degree about politics and we can already hear a bunch of you hitting the X button. But this is important because it applies to everyone else in your life, so hear us out. Rich people understand the power of choices and that of the political machine. The idea that laws can be created and the impact they can have on society. Poor people ignore this completely. Poor people vote considerably less because they feel like their vote doesn't matter, that they don't get to choose. But here's the deal. A single person not voting doubles the power of someone who does vote. For too long, politics have become a different type of entertainment, some sort of a popularity contest. To us, it seems like people do not understand the power they have to change their own communities through voting with their own interest. Local politicians are meant to look out for your interests, Put them in power and change them if they don't follow up. We believe that in our lifetime, the entire political landscape will be disrupted through the aid of technology. In some parts of the world, we're already seeing successful tests of direct democracy, where people get to vote on specific issues in their communities through an app on their smartphone. Municipalities and cities should give the people the power to select where at least a portion of the money they pay in taxes goes. Would you rather fund hospitals, roads, schools, or the re-election of the current governor? No matter where you live in the world, stop voting for people that appeal to your humanistic side and start voting for the ones that are pushing your people forward. If you want to get ahead in life, your interests should drive your choices. As long as you remember this, you can begin to change how you do things. You vote every day with your money, with your time, and with your energy. You choose the life you live right now, and maybe starting today you can choose something better. If you've watched up to this point and are considering an upgrade in your lifestyle, please write the word upgrade next to your answer to today's question. That way, we know the efforts we are putting in are reaching all the right people. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. 
You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.